This is an unfun video to make. In college, my gay best friend and I joked that if we hadn't found love by 40, we'd have a baby with each other. 20 years later, I'm pulling the ripcord. From deciding on solo motherhood to choosing IVF, I'm Meredith, and this is The Backup Plan. This has been a really weird and strange journey so far. It continues to be. And the plan has been to go ahead with August. That might shift slightly, and we'll talk about that next week. I... <sighs> My heart's beating really fast. Not fast, heavy. So... I mentioned in past episodes that I didn't really have much of a reaction to the hormones that I was taking, and that's true. When I finished everything up, I would say like a week and a half after my egg retrieval, I felt a strange feeling in my left breast. I couldn't, like, it's hard to kind of like share what the feeling is. Like, it was deep, deep in. And it was kind of like pinchy. Using the word was doesn't really fit because I still feel it. I figured that it was a reaction to the hormones. I um, thought, you know what, this is just your body's doing some kind of weird things as things settle down. <laughs> but I did put it on my list of things to chat with the doctor about. So when I had a call with Dr. Sundheimer like a week and a half ago, I mentioned it to her and she said, well, Right now is the perfect time to get it checked out because we have a little bit of time before we do the implantation and we start the hormones. So I'm going to order a mammogram for you. I actually had a really funny uh, exchange with her because I said to her like, well, I know you're not an OBGYN or anything because I don't know in my head. I was just like, she's a doctor of fertility. And she goes, well, actually, I am an OBGYN. <laughs> and I was like, oh, yeah, yeah. Cool. I keep reminding her all the time. I'm just a theater major. I don't know. So she ordered a mammogram for me. I was really surprised at how quickly I was able to get it made. For some context, when I was 18, right before college, I had a little lump in my right breast. And I thought it was just, it was always there. I never remember a time of not having it. So to me, it was just a normal thing. And when I had my last checkup with my pediatrician at 18, always fun, right before I went off to college, they said, no, 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 we should get that checked out. And I had to have an ultrasound and everything, and it was very spooky right before I went off to college. And they said, no, it's just fibro. I don't know, but don't worry about it. You just have a lump. It's not a big deal. So I've had that checked out uh, once or twice since then, and, and nothing has changed with it. So... I was told by my doctor that having a mammogram starting at 40 was really important to do. And looking at the timeline of getting implanted, I would be pregnant while I was 40. So getting a mammogram right before it didn't seem like inappropriate, right? It was scary to go in. This was on Wednesday, the 17th of July. It's just not fun. <laughs> And I thought it was going to hurt more than it did. It didn't really hurt. It was more that the worst part is like you have to like hug the machine and it's like giving a very inhospitable robot a, a big squeeze. I left there and felt fine. Um, didn't really think about it. And it was like Wednesday late afternoon on Thursday morning at about 830. I got a call back to say that they found something unique and they wanted to have another look at it and asked if I could come in the next day. And that this time I'd be going to a hospital because it went from being a routine check to a diagnostic. When I get news, what are the different responses? Fight, flight, freeze, or fawn? I think are the, the four. Now it used to just be fight or flight, but now it's, there's more things to do. I guess I freeze. I didn't really have feelings about it. <laughs> Uh, but I went in on Friday morning to like a special women's pavilion at a hospital in Newport Beach and had to get a much more complicated mammogram, which involved more robot hugging just at different angles. <laughs> and um, they did an ultrasound. And I remember the woman who was doing the ultrasound, she was like, really? I told her, I was like, this is like a weird like Korean skincare routine or something because she just kept going like over it and over it and over it, like twisting and then going up and then twisting and going down. It was so strange. And I remember watching her face at one point. She went, 
like, I don't, don't, don't do that. Don't, don't do that about my boob. So she called the radiologist back in and explained to me that there was something a little strange that they couldn't see in the ultrasound, but they could see in the mammogram. And I had to come back for a biopsy. So this sucks. <laughs> I don't think it's going to be anything. The doctor explained to me that she thinks it's a radial scar. And when I read my charts back, it said that there was architectural distortion. So it was kind of explained to me that like regular breast tissue kind of like expands out like this, like kind of like the, the veins in a leaf. But that with me, there's like a part that's just kind of like folded over. The radiologist told me that regardless of what the biopsy says on Thursday, there's like a 99.9% .9 chance that they're just going to take it out. I was doing calendar math in my head so hard as I was trying to process the information that they were telling me because I just want to proceed with IVF. I just want to be pregnant. I have gone through a lot to get to this point and I don't want to delay it any further. But upon like coming to my senses, <laughs> I realized the best thing to do is to push back at the very least a month because I got to take care of this. I got to figure out what's going on. It's just stupid because I, I put this off because of my goddamn foot and I got the foot kind of taken care of. It's still a little iffy, but mostly taken care of. And now there's this and I am sick of the curveballs. I just, you know, I wanted to be pregnant three years ago <laughs> and um, man, it takes a long time to get to where you need to get to. The radiologist did tell me that it was a really, really good thing that I came in when I did. She made it sound as though like pregnancy would put stress on this because this architectural distortion can lead to cancer and that's why it's going to come out. But you know what blows is when you're like so open and honest about everything and then everybody's like, oh, you're implanting in August, right? I've been paying attention and you have to go, maybe not. <laughs> and again, it was one of those things like the day I found out I had three people text me, hey Meredith, what's going on? that nebulous vague, what's going on? Um, so yeah, I want to record how I'm feeling right now, even though I don't think I'm being like really open about my feelings. Cause to be honest, I don't have them right now. I don't, I don't know. I've, I've, um, I've cried like twice about it maybe, but I was kind of like crying about other things cause my body doesn't know how to process this. And I also don't want to get too upset about this because I don't want this to be a thing worth getting upset about. Does that make sense? There's this part of me that I keep trying to <laughs> push away because it's completely illogical. This part of me that thinks if I just hadn't gotten it checked out, we wouldn't have to worry about it. And that's not how life works. That's not how the body works. It's a good thing I got it checked out and it's a good thing I'm doing something about it. It just blows kind of sucky. That's the latest. I hope future Meredith has better updates. Crossing my fingers like the architectural distortion in my breast. The Backup Plan is created, produced, and hosted by me, Meredith Kate. Julian Hagens is my co-producer. You can find us on social media at Backup Plan Pod. The best place to get updates is to sign up for our newsletter at BackupPlanPod.com, where we also post all episodes, show notes, and transcripts. Thank you for listening.